What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. Today we're doing a review from yesterday's challenge and this is an exciting one. This is one video I want you to watch because we have about seven or eight different designs that I'm gonna review. A couple of them I didn't touch at all. I thought they were great. And then a few of them, I really had to make a lot of adjustments. So there's a lot of learning to be had in watching this video. So make sure to subscribe up if you haven't yet. Keep on following along with the 30 day UI UX series and I'll shut up, let's get started. All right, so here is the first design, and this is from Sejoy, somebody who's been following along with this challenge quite well. And I have to say, this right here, I like it. Um, just to go back to the original, you know, what people were left with, I, I'm gonna paste this right up here. So this was the original challenge right here, just to do something to finish this, and you can change colors and add stuff, remove stuff. So um, this right here, I actually like it. It's it's the closest to the original that, I, that we have, um, but it's simple and I like it. This is a great image that really speaks well to what's happening here. So I have no revisions. I mean, maybe move this down here in the center, but other than that, this is solid. So very good. Now the next one's gonna need a little bit more work. This is from Nahil, which is has also been submitting pretty much every submission uh, challenge and it's good. So this though, we need to uh, make some adjustments and that's because there's a few things going wrong here. The first is, I call this kind of, I call it muddy. It just looks muddy and what that means is, is it's kind of washed out because of this photograph based watermark background and also because there's elements on top of it. There's a lot of grays mixed in here. So the solution here is to simplify this. Additionally, having like uh, a few words of text with really extended letter spacing, like a whole sentence, that's always a no in my opinion. Um, you, I, the only time I ever use significant letter spacing is like on a tag, like a single word, two words max, something very small. Um, so I'm gonna show you a few things, a few different steps that I took to start making changes to this while kind of keeping the same concept. Right now it's raining and I have a metal roof. Okay, we'll have to deal with that. So the first thing I did was just get rid of the background and make this text just very simple. It's black and orange essentially. That's the first change that I've done. And we can tell already, simplicity wise, we've really increased it quite a bit, but we still have work to do. So the next adjustment I'm making right here is instead of boxing this type in with a high contrast background, I, I, I never like to do this sort of thing. Um, I really try to open things up. So if you're gonna have a container, make it not so boxy in boxing in a single piece of type. Instead, just drag it all the way up. Now, of course, it's not dark enough and this text is black, so it doesn't look good, but we're starting to make progress. And so I'm making this change here. I took, oh, and by the way, I also took this type right here, got rid of the extended letter spacing and left aligned it, okay? Everything starts on this column right here, all right? And then continuing on, we make it black. All right, so now we're coming together. I made it much darker. We have separators here, which you could get, you could remove those if you wish or make them lower contrast, whatever. But now we have something, And but there's a lot of empty space right here in this section and down here. So then I decided to move it down, kind of uh, give this more space, more white space around the tagline or so. Um, and then I made some more adjustments after looking at it. I decided to take the type right here, maybe consume a little bit more space here by having it on top. And then we brought this guy from the first entry just to fill out the design and finish it up. So this is the original, kind of just looks bland and a little bit too busy. And this is the revision that I have right here. All right, continuing on, I wish the rain would stop so badly. It just won't stop. So I have to keep on recording with the damn rain. <laughs> so this one right here suffers from the same fate as the other one. Um, with these large watermarked photograph based or you know vector based uh, backgrounds here, it really just, it, it, it's hard because it really makes it extra busy most of the time. And so that's what we have here. And I'm gonna show you how we can kind of just take the same concept here and make it more simplistic and overall a better quality design. And this, by the way, is from Dennis. Thank you for the submission. So the first thing I do is get rid of the background. Now, of course, there's still a lot of work to do. Um, so let's continue on. There we go. So this right here, 
kickflip. This is our main headline and subheadline. I got rid of all the extra stuff. There's a stroke on here. There's like this gray um, line underneath, and this isn't aligned to this. So just to make everything consistent, I align them along the same path, and they're 100% white against 100% black background. That's maximum contrast, and it just feels and looks better in my opinion. Now let's kick it. This button kind of feels out of place with the strong kind of a stroke here. I, I'm sorry about the rain. This is terrible. Um, so what I decided to do is just make it more monochromatic right here. And then of course I introduced like just a real simple sort of icon based on kickflip. Now I don't think I really like this one. I decided to adjust things and turn it into more of a watermark and put the call to action over here. And to make it more interesting, I also decided to take this concept where it's slightly rotated and I did that with the testimonials beneath it. So here's the original. And then here is my altered version, which I'll be honest, I would probably want to work on this a little bit more, but the name of the game here is to simplify, 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 and get rid of all of the unnecessary distractions. So um, next up, all right, so this one's actually pretty good. I like it pretty much as is, but I decided to tinker with it just to have fun. So basically what I did is I took the background. Notice how the character is darker than the background. I decided to make it lighter than the background. So we have a more dark UI off the bat in this context. Now this let's uh, start button is a little bit thin height wise. And so I definitely want to increase the size of that, um, which I'll do here in a bit right there. So this is here is good. This is ready to go in my opinion, but then we're going to continue. And I decided to bring this up because it looks a little bit crammed down here, the testimonial bar. So I brought it up a lot and I kind of centered the call to action over it, but it still gets lost. So really the call to action in this context should be white or something light to really make it stand out from the rest of the UI. So this is the original. And then here is the modified version. I did a secondary version where we got rid of the bar at the bottom as well, which works. Awesome. All right, let's check out the next one. Now this one is like a really cool, I, I know it's like really orange and in your face. And by the way, this is from Chinu. And there's just a couple things that I wanted to adjust about this. I like the colors overall. Um, but the one thing I do, don't like is how this is so close against the edge. And it's also not aligned. Like this is shifted over to the left a little bit too much. So if I go back to the next area, I got the, rid of that and we have a lot of white space now. And they're both aligned along the same column. And I also took this kick flip bar, this little marquee bar, and made it thicker as well. All right. So I don't like how this testimonial section is kind of floating up over here to the right. So I move that down and also make it bold so they're a little bit more readable. So now it's on the same column. So we're paying attention to our columns and our rows and trying to align things um, in a in more cohesive fashion. So here's the original. And then here is my adjusted version right here. Very cool. Now the next one is awesome. I decided not to make any adjustments to this. This is from this person right here. Um, very cool. Even though it's a snowboarder um, and not, you know, a skateboarder, this works very well. I love the whimsical nature of the illustration and it really just lends itself well to a type of UI design that would be, you know, just great. I love it. Very nice. All right, so here's our final one. There's a lot happening here. So what we're going to have to do is really take away. We're going to take away a bunch of elements from this, and you're going to see the final result is awesome. It's my favorite final result that we have that's a part of this series. So the first thing I do is I get rid of all the, these, uh, these strokes or uh, the, the duplicated version of the outline of the uh, headline. So look over there. Look at this. So I also made a couple other adjustments, like where it says flip the and kick the. I made those more obvious and left align them over their respective words. So flip the kick, kick the flip, yeah, whatever that means. Also, I got rid of those extra, um, this little bar behind here, like this, this dark part. Don't need that. And also don't need all the copies of the headline here. Now, one thing that still gets hidden is this stuff down here. The, the subhead, it's time to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And also the call to action kind of gets hidden. So let's work on that. All right. So now we took the, uh, the subheadline and we left the line, it made it bold and it's way easier to read now. And then also 
select your skateboard, this button is way more obvious as compared to right here. Now these are also not very obvious at all. They kind of get lost at the bottom. So you can see if I fast forward, I just basically switch to the original version um, from the challenge and it works perfect. So now if we were to take and hit play, this person, let me adjust this so that uh, you can see fit to screen. There you go. Look how cool this is. This is a very, very cool idea. Now, of course, his face is messed up. This is AI generated, but that's not a big deal. It's just for practice. But this is really, really cool. I like this. I don't like the hover state here because the button gets lost. Nonetheless, um, I really like this end result. So the original is right here kind of gets pretty, you know, it's kind of cluttered. It's sort of, it's cool, but it's cluttered. And now if we take away all those extra elements, everything comes together so much better. Now it's finally start stopping the raining now that I'm done. That's just my luck. Uh, so anyhow, that was a fun one. And of course, and you might be wondering what's going on with my hand right here. I literally just forgot I was playing pool and this is my pool glove. Anyway, <laughs> that was a fun challenge because I took a lot of the training wheels off. You know, I let you use your own colors, your own photographs, move things around. You can see some people are having a hard time with that. Uh, they're trying to do too much. That's the good news. Do less, simplify, mine the columns in rows, align things with white space and alignment in a way that makes sense. And don't just randomly throw things around and just always think simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. So for the next video, we're gonna have another challenge tomorrow and that is going to be on light in dark mode. So this is gonna be a fun one as well. So I'll see you all soon. Check out designcourse.com for the full UI UX course. Make sure to sub up here if you haven't and I'll see you soon, goodbye.